Savvy and Professional Podcast. My name is Tanita Mullen and I am so excited as always to be hosting this show for you today. In this episode, we are going to talk to Elizabeth Roberts. She is a business consultant, but most importantly, she is the author of a book called Listening to Connect. This book is your guide on how you can listen to really take your business, your career, your relationships to the next level. And Elizabeth and myself, we're gonna talk about all the ways you can do that. This is a really interesting episode, people, so make sure you listen and get some information. Okay, welcome Elizabeth to the show. Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you for having me, Tanita. Great. So I already did a little bit of a um, introduction for you before the show started, but I like to give you the opportunity to really tell us about who you are and what you do, um, and how you got to where you are. Well, a little bit about me. Um, I actually have a bit of a mixed background. I have a background in psychology, but I've put it to use in the business world. And it's served me quite well. So I've been able to work with some really great professionals in the financial industry um, and help them build their businesses and become more effective with their clients. And now I'm branching out into actually going into more of just the broader professional arena with that. Great. That sounds great. So you have a, a, a background in finance, and I'm pretty sure just everything that you said, you know, you have a background in psychology, experience in finance, um, working more in, you know, general professional development. Um, you probably see lots of different things happen in each industry. But I assume that when it comes to what we're going to talk about today, which is listening, that people probably have some of the same issues um, across the board, right? Definitely. And this has become a passion of mine. Listening is so crucial just as a just as a human skill set. We do it every single day, whether we do it, you know, properly or not. We're all listening at some capacity. And I just want to get a message out there helping people understand how to have it work to their benefit and also help them rebuild relationships out there. Great. So um, your book, we'll go ahead and jump into that really quickly because I I really want to make sure that we talk about the book because it's all about listening. And when I first read it, I mean, I I said to myself, wow, there, there are things in here that I don't even think about on a daily basis that I probably do um, that probably affect or have, have a huge um, effect on my relationships, my business relationships, um, just everything that I'm trying to do or everything that I have going on. And it really was an eye opener and I really enjoyed it. So the book is called um, The Power of Listening, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The book is called The Power of Listening. And it's really interesting how you broke it down into different sections. And I kind of want to take some pieces from there and get some more insight for you on from you about that um one of the quotes in the book um you mentioned that we can't expect people to understand us or even want to hear us until we show them um that we hear and understand them so tell me a little bit about that quote and how you you came to that um realization that's that's a really great quote that you pulled out of the book. So I really believe that's the entire kind of crux of it. Um, so often we go into conversations, you know, only thinking of ourselves. I just want somebody to understand me. And if I talk over them or if I talk loud enough, they'll hear me and they'll understand me. Um, and we don't stop to think, well, maybe they can't hear or understand me because I'm not giving them the space to really hear me. So what I mean by that is we have to show people that we can hear and understand them. We have to be that example of what it means to to be a great listener. Um, I can't expect you. I can't walk into the room and talk over you and then expect the courtesy that you're going to listen to me, right? We 
we lead by example. So I really believe that once we can, you know, step out there and be the listener and want to understand other people first, they will return that favor to us. They'll learn how to listen to us so they can understand us. So I really believe that we need to to be the one who goes out there first and understand them and then they can in turn have the space to understand us. So it sounds like that if you really want to embrace the idea of listening, that you kind of have to be the leader in it, um, is what I take from what you're saying. It sounds like uh, you can't go into the situation um, being an effective listener thinking that um, that somebody's going to give first. It sounds like you have to kind of be proactive and be actually the one giving the attention in the beginning. Am I right? Absolutely. I think so often, you know, we go into these situations of these conversations and we're so we're so focused on what we want to communicate and what we want other people to hear um, that we do. We lose sight of, you know, meeting their needs as well. So really, we don't even know how to effectively listen anymore. So I do believe that we need to actually practice what we want in order to get what we want. Absolutely. And then we talk, um, you go a little bit deeper into the book after the beginning, and you talk about these three concepts, um, the concepts of presence, uh, listening, or listening, and then the curiosity. Can you tell me uh, a little bit about how you came up with those three concepts? Sure. So I really broke down listening um, into some into the three main concepts of you know being present in a conversation, the actual skill set behind listening, and then curiosity to bring all of that together. And it's a very practical way to actually build on the skills of listening itself. So first and foremost, presence. Uh, you can't you know, you can't really think about your grocery list. You can't think about picking the kids up from school, what you need to do do at work, um, what you want to communicate, and really hear what somebody is trying to tell you. So first and foremost, you need to be present in that situation. And that means, you know, clearing your mind. That means, you know, being able to to look at that person and really hear the words that are coming out of their mouth, not the words that are going on in your own mind. Um, and then there's also just the the everyday skills of listening. We've all heard, you know, there's the nonverbal and verbal way of listening. You know, we we mirror each other when you're really in a good conversation and it's going you know you're you're in that mix with them it's almost like a little dance right you're kind of leaning forward with them as they're leaning forward and they're leaning back and you're leaning back or you know it, it's really great to watch people in say a romantic relationship as they speak to one another or best friends if you ever see best friends in a restaurant watch them and watch how they move together as they're in conversation they're present with each other and they're enacting these skills of mirroring each other um you're also you know you're making eye contact with somebody not that creepy eye contact where you're just peering at somebody, but that natural giving them your attention, your body's facing them, you're not looking away, you're, just, you're being attentive. That way you can really hear the message that they're, they're trying to convey to you. Um, and then curiosity. I think really curiosity brings it all together. And that's why I left it to the very end. Um, when you're curious, all of those things tend to happen on their own. You become present because you want to know what that person has to say. Just like when you're, you know, sitting on the edge of your seat in that drama movie or that horror film. And you're like, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen next? And I can't believe it. When you're curious, that's what's happening inside of you. You want to know more. You become, you know, that 
that attentive listener, you're doing all of those things that it takes to truly receive that message. And you're doing it unconsciously because you really, truly want to know. So those are my three keys to actually implementing, um, in a practical sense, how to listen. Yes, those were amazing. Um, as I as I started to to read through the the information, I thought to myself, okay, what what am I not doing, <laughs> and how can I be better at one of these? And when you talk about presence, I'm going to back up a little bit to talk about um, being present. And you say this is this this is the practice. So I'm guessing um, that that takes a little bit more of your your true focus. And so it got me to thinking, how is it? that people they can they can be doing the the body motions and they could actually be you know really seeming like they 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 look like they're listening but they are can they can be totally other places and i say that because it's definitely happened to me i'm pretty sure people listening to this could might be able to relate that you know you might be talking to somebody sitting across from them and all of the signs show you know physically that you're listening but you're really you know but you're not you are thinking about the groceries or you are thinking about if you left something at work or something like that so why do you think people have a a hard time with the the actual focus that it takes to listen well I think so much of our world today is consumed with go 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 I mean we've got our cell phones strapped to us there's you know greater demand for our time we're just we're just distracted Um, We have a lot on our plate, so our mind is constantly going. Um, So really implementing, you know, this being present on purpose is what I like to call it, is, you know, it's something to get used to. It's something you will need to practice at first, and I actually talk about it in the book, um, how how to kind of go there, how to take that deep breath, how to get your mind right, and how to get into it. And I recommend to everybody, before you go into any meaningful conversation, especially, you know, your spouse or at work, um, be mindful of that and take a deep breath. Give yourself 30 seconds before that conversation. You know, if you're right before you walk in that door, take a deep breath, close your eyes and take maybe two or three more, clear your mind and say, I, for the next 10 minutes or however long this conversation is going to be, my only job, my only mission is to really listen to this person. And you make that your intention and it'll start becoming your habit. Yes, I I think that's great advice. Um, one of the parts, one of the things that um, are part of the book is there's actually a scoring system in there. <laughs> and I was pretty honest with myself when I took it, um, that you can actually rate yourself on how effective you are with some of the skills that you just mentioned. And so um, I definitely enjoyed that part of the book because it gave me an honest view. Well, as honest as I could be with myself <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> about um, what I was actually, what I, what I need to probably work on. And so I think to, you know, looking at this in, in, in an aerial view, I, I would imagine that really focusing and like putting yourself in that place is probably one of the things that's the hardest or at least will take the most practice and um, you actually give some pretty good I um, you actually give some pretty good tips uh, for people who want to actually who want to practice and who want to be better at listening so that's the first step the second step um, was to actually listen. So tell me a little bit more about what that means. So I'm, I'm focused, I'm present, I'm, I've worked on that part and I'm, I've cleared my schedule and my, in my mind to listen to the person or to be present in this conference or whatever it is I'm doing. Um, what are some of the things that I can do to actually take it to the next level when it comes to upping the listening skills? So the listening skills, well, first of all, let me tell you um, the way I look at listening or the way I see listening. Um, It's really, really simple. Listening is all about receiving a message, receiving a message that you can interpret correctly the way the person actually meant for you to receive the message. 
not what you want to hear, but what they're actually trying to tell you. That's the entire goal of listening. Um, so to take it to the next level, and this also incorporates being present, first and foremost, you do need to give that person eye contact in some form or fashion. You need to face them. Um, that shows the person respect. Uh, there's nothing, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you've all been here and done this and been the receiver of this one. Somebody, You're talking to somebody and suddenly they look away. You know, there's nothing more disrespectful <laughs> and disheartening than that. You're like, I was in the middle of the best part. You're going to miss the good stuff, you know, the part that I really need you to understand. Um, that's why it's so crucial that you, you maintain that, you know, that at least having the body facing the other person in such a way that it shows you're being attentive. Um, another crucial piece to it is your posture. Your posture says not only does it say a lot about you, but it is kind of like your antenna. So it's kind of like your receiver. The better your posture is, the more able you are to hear, understand, receive that message being communicated. So if you find yourself struggling to kind of stay present, you see your mind starting to wander or something like that, you're starting to think about that grocery list, check your posture. See if you're, if you're sitting up straight, if you're finding yourself slouching, you're not allowing kind of that blood to flow properly so you're giving that person um, the correct attention and also when you when you straighten up and you're facing somebody and you have that attentive posture it encourages them to speak and to speak fully and you'll be able to get you know more content out of them so you can actually put the pieces together and really understand what they're trying to say um, and I already went over, you know, the mirroring a little bit ago, but um, it's really cool. I really do encourage each and every one of you to, you know, go out there and, and watch some people in, some, in, you know, in these conversation and watch the back and forth and the hand gestures and, and how both parties kind of tend to pick one, you know, they pick something and they, it's almost like they're dancing out there on the, on the dance floor. It's really cool. Um, so I do encourage you, you know, as you're trying to, you know, figure out, you know, how to do that dance, pick one thing that feels comfortable and natural to you to mirror. Maybe it is just leaning forward as they lean forward and leaning back when they lean back. That seems to be the most natural thing for people to start with and, and see how that feels. Practice that for at least a week um, and then go into different other different things that, you know, you can mirror. Um, and also, um, one of the big things to help you with your presence and to help the other person communicate better with you is if you start to paraphrase or, you know, kind of summarize what they're saying. And that helps. It not only helps them understand that you're really listening but it helps you to clarify what you're what they're trying to tell you. So if they need to tweak it a little bit, they know that you've listened and you've asked the right question or you've summarized the message in such a way that they're like, oh, that's not exactly how I meant for you to hear that. So then they can go back and clarify that for you. So those are my top next level keys to get you um, actually to start thinking about those listening skills and putting them to work. Yes. One of the things that I thought was interesting about what you said is the posture. I don't really ever think about that in listening. Um, I know that when I'm, when I'm trying to focus my energy on somebody and really listen to what they have to say, I tend to change the way that I sit because it's a mm -hmm. reminder for, uh, for me to say, okay, Tanita, you're still here. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's let's get focused here. Um, and so I think that's interesting that not only does it help you, but it also helps the person that you're talking to maybe, you know, kind of change what they're saying or maybe, you know, get the words out better. Because I, I guess now that you mention it, they might when they see you sit up like that, that's a universal sign of, OK, I'm paying attention. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. And so for that, you know, then they might 
change what they're saying if they're being a little relaxed in their tone or if they're you know maybe skipping over words and running words in together that they might actually um, change the way that they're talking to be a little bit more clear and a little bit more um, enunciate more. Well, and think about how cool it is, you know, and how great you feel when somebody kind of sits up and they're looking at you with that, you know, that attentive look. And you're like, they're really getting this, you know, and it just it makes the person who's speaking speak even clearer because they're now excited about what they're trying to communicate to you. You know, there's no space for, you know, animosity or anger or anything like that when somebody feels like they're being heard, you know. That is a really good point. I love that. That is a tweetable. I'm going to have to get that one wrote, get that one out to, <laughs> to the world. That was awesome. You're absolutely right. And that's something that I think we all can work on in every single conversation that we have. So we get to the last part of the three key concepts. And that's, I mean, that's kind of the core of, of how the book is set up and your message. And there's other things in there sprinkled within techniques and, um, like I said, a, a, an opportunity for someone to rate themselves um, mm -hmm. but then you kind of wrap it up when you talk about the being curious to and, and being um, really wanting to know and so my question is with that is when you what happens when you are truly not interested in what someone is saying because we're human and there are times where we are talking to people or we're listening to something maybe it's something that we have heard before a thousand times from the person or maybe it's just something that we have no interest in at all but you want to show respect and you want to you know you really do want to listen and, and have a conversation how would you how do you handle a situation like that that is a Great question, Tanita. In fact, I, I mentioned a little, uh, there's a little story in the book about that. Um, there, there was a point in time in my life where there was a story coming up being told to me over and over again. And I was just at my wits end with it. You know, it was one of those where it's like, really, I have to hear this again. I could tell this story. I don't, I really. So, you know, I had to say to myself, okay, there's a reason this is coming up. Um, there's something I need to hear out of this or it, you know, why would this continue to come up <laughs> otherwise? So I'm like, okay, finally, I'm, what I did is I kind of played a game with myself as I entered this conversation and I said, obviously there's something I'm, I need to learn. So I'm just going to focus all my attention, my energy in figuring out what that is um, and I just got real curious with it and I was like, okay. And at first, you know, the questions, I didn't know what to ask, but as, as I started asking more questions and I started getting more clarity from the message, I was like, whoa, this totally went somewhere that, I, you know, one, I hadn't heard it that way before. I was able to, to hear the message with much more clarity because I was in it. I was involved in it. I wanted to know about it. When you go into a conversation already convinced that you don't want to know anything, you're not going to get anything. You're going to miss the entire opportunity. So it's a lot more fun actually to have those conversations where you're in that curiosity mode where you're like, there's something in here juicy for me to know. And I'm just going to, you know, find out what it is and I'm going to ask some questions and uncover whatever golden gem there is in this. Because I really believe that every conversation we have, there is something to learn from it. Um, I think every every person, every interaction we have, um, it's a, it, that's a teacher that's been brought into our lives. So there's something about that conversation where it wouldn't be taking place. So I do recommend be curious, figure it out, figure out what is it that I'm really supposed to learn and take away from this. And you'll be surprised what happens. It's, it's really cool. Yes, that that's amazing. I love that, that piece. And I, and I know the, you know, the story cause I was reading it. Um, but it's really interesting that you say that because even 
you know, we, we always have those situations where we've heard something before. And I think it's, it's really interesting to say, well, let me ask a question that I maybe haven't asked before, or let me, maybe there's a part of the story that normally they kind of just, you know, go over real quick, but you never really got clarity of how they got to that point. And so you just dig a little bit deeper. And I think that's a really great point. And I also think that it also will work for maybe something that you don't have an interest in. Because I know we're talking about a a story Mm -hmm. that's on repeat, but it might be, you know, something that maybe you don't have an interest in. I'm naturally curious, but I I can recall a time where um, I was having a conversation with someone and the the subject, what they were talking about, I I honestly, I was thinking, I don't know if I really, you know, (laughs) have an interest in this. But the one thing that changed my mind in that moment was how excited that they got when I asked the first question. Mm-hmm. You know, when oh, yeah. I truly asked one question, it was like, okay, boom, here we go. And they got so excited. And, and it was almost like no one had ever asked them questions before. And so um, I think it, it, it's great. And I think that's a really good tip. And I hope that if you're listening to the show, you can you can try that in those moments when it's a little bit more challenging to pay attention. So take that one with you. I appreciate you telling us that one, Elizabeth. Well, and on that note, it's interesting you bring that piece up. I mean, just the simple act of asking somebody a question about something that's important to them makes them feel important. It lights them up. And in turn, when we light somebody up, it lights us up. We feel really great that we were able to have that kind of impact on somebody. And that's what truly changes relationships. And that's really how you can master this power of listening that I talk about. It's about that connection with another human being, seeing that they have a story to tell or a message that they're trying to get out to you. Um, Asking the questions and being attentive, you know, it just really lights them up. It gives them that opportunity to shine. And you're probably the only person that is willing to do that for them. So it's, it's a pretty powerful thing when you can, when you can truly listen to somebody. Yes, it really is. And I think one of the the most challenging times is maybe when you're having a disagreement. And I would imagine that when you are having a disagreement with someone, that would probably be the best time to use some of these skills. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, we've all been in an argument. We all know what it's like. And what's the, first, what's the one thing that we're doing? I would say um, we're all keeping the argument going by simply being in our own minds and not listening. We're not listening. We're only worried about, you know, they need to understand where I'm coming from. I don't care where they're coming from. I'm not listening to them. I'm formulating my argument. They need to hear my point. And you're not in that conversation anymore. How, how are you going to hear what you need to hear from them if all you're doing is going through your own dialogue in your own mind? So, yes, to that point, um, arguments, is, even though I know they're highly emotional, it's actually to your benefit to be the one to sit back be present and receive what they're trying to tell you you will get a nugget out of it that you wouldn't have heard before you may get some clarity out of that thing out of that conversation and it may be something really simple like okay the paper towels ran out so can you write it on the list you know instead of it going into like this huge argument about the house being filthy and you never do anything. It doesn't have to actually get to that level. You, if you just stop and listen and be present, you will gain every piece of information that you need to resolve that argument. Love it. I think that is some of the best advice um, that anybody can really take with them that it's, you know, it's tough. We're humans, we disagree. But I think that, you know, listening to what you had to say and just 
making sure that you're present, that you are listening, you have those cues, you're you're using that body language, you're attentive, you're up. And then also, you know, using the kind of questions and clarification questions in in um in a situation where it's a little bit heated. I think it shows respect, you know, to the mm-hmm. other person, but I also think that it takes a lot of the unnecessary conversation out. And so that that right there I keep saying this in this podcast take that one with you this is a good one obviously everything you're saying is amazing (laughs) uh, one more piece to that it just reminded me of something um you know as you're sitting there and you're really listening and you're the one that's staying calm if you're the calm one in the room we tend to you know I spoke about mirroring earlier one of two things will happen Either you're going to escalate to their level, which after reading this book, you won't do any longer. Um, So that's going to force the other person to calm down and go to stay rational and be on your level. So it doesn't escalate anymore. So just that one thing alone, being present, will deescalate that argument. Awesome. All right. Well, I have a few more questions for you. Um, One of them is, you know, it's an interesting time right now, especially for young professionals. You know, there's people, you know, it's an entrepreneurial kind of market right now. Um, and there's just a lot of things going on in that, in, in the job world and, you know, in life. And so my question to you is, what is something that young professionals need to keep in mind when it comes to their careers or their business or their relationships um, as it relates to listening? What is that one thing that you can say to them and you can say, you know, if I could give you one piece of advice to help you take it to, to help you in your your general career, um, this is what it would be. My best advice on listening, especially um, today, Um, wherever it is, whether it's work, professionally, with your relationships, um, know this. Very few people do it well. So just being able to, you know, take this knowledge and implement it puts you on a whole different level. People won't be able to compete with you. People will want to be around you. Um, Your boss will want to promote you because when you hear other people, not only are you understanding the message that they're trying to convey, you're able to garner the information in such a way that you can solve problems and they want to be around you because they feel heard and accepted by you. So just know that the act of listening alone, um, it it will change your entire professional and personal life. Wow, there we have it. The key, the secret. (laughs) (laughs) That's good, that's good. And and I I know, um, especially in such a fast-paced, cell phone, iPad-driven world, that that is going to be gold. Um, to somebody so thank you for that and what I like to do when we start to wrap up our call is um, I like to ask the question at the end of the show to all my guests Um, and it's basically a chance for you to kind of think back and I want to know if you knew all the things that you know now um, if you knew this information back then whatever then is for you um, what would be different or what would you tell yourself? That is an awesome question. You know, I, I don't, life would be actually a lot different. Um, I would have, you know, back in, back in my younger years, I would have been a lot more understanding. I actually would have um, been a lot more humble um, and compassionate with people, which really would have alleviated a lot of stress that I created in my own life. Um, Really, because I I wasn't effectively receiving some of the, you know, communications out there. I was having to make it up. And, you know, when we make up and we assume, we create a lot of unnecessary stress in our lives. So 
um, implementing, you know, all of these three keys of listening has made my life a lot less stressful and my relationships are a lot better because of it. Thank you. Well, we appreciate, I I appreciate you taking the time to join me on this, on the podcast. I know that there were people, there are going to be people listening to this that um, are going to be writing feverishly, probably pulling over on the side of the road, um, writing some of this stuff down or replaying some of this information that we talked about today. Very, very powerful stuff here. So, Just for everybody listening, if they want to know more about you, if they want to find out where to find this amazing book, um, how about you give us some information on where we can find you? The best place to find me will be um, on my website, which is elizabethrobertsconsulting.com. And on that website, you'll find a wealth of information about listening and just about self-improvement personally and also professionally as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for coming on, Elizabeth. And I really appreciate the information you gave us today. Well, Tanita, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for having this podcast out there in the world. I mean, so many people... You know, they, they need to hear the message that you're putting out, you know, getting all these tools in, into their hands. So thank you so much for having this. Wow, what an engaging episode. I actually learned a little bit more about my listening skills than I, I anticipated learning on this particular show. I want to thank you for listening to the Savvy Young Professional Podcast. You can find me at the savvyyp.com you can find me at the savvy yp on all of our social media outlets and if you really just want to connect with me one-on-one you can also find me on twitter at tanita marie i want you to continue to listen to the savvy and professional podcast because we have some really cool shows coming your way in the future so many good things in the pipeline that i know is, is going to really help you level up especially in 2016 If you are local in the Central Texas area, I am hosting an event to kick off the 2016 year. I want you to take the lead in your career and in your business. So January 9th, 2016, I will be hosting a event for the new year. If you want to know more about that, you can check that out on Eventbrite at Take the Lead 2016 and get all the ticket details. I want to see you there because I want you to kick off the new year in a big way thank you so much for listening guys catch you later 